Hi, I'm Mara Webster with In Creative Company, and I'm so excited today to be joined by Ella Belinska to talk all about her Netflix series, Resident Evil. And the, the thing I was actually interested in is in terms of character development, just the richness that you had with the scripts, because the story is being told in these two timelines where you have a younger version of your character, how that influenced and evolved the way that you were developing your character based on the way that you would normally approach that, given that there were so many pivotal moments and elements and details that you had the opportunity to build on that were already there in the scripts and that, you know, once you were filming, you could look at how another actor was was capturing that character as well to really align into the rest of the story for your time period. It was, that was something that, um, uh, the writers did so well and kind of what originally drew me to the script was the fact that you get to see and not in just like flashback style um these really like you say like pivotal moments in character development which kind of are the reason why Jade which is the character I play is who she is uh today um and Tamara Smart who plays younger me she's sort of in the 2022 timeline <laughs> and um I'm in 2036 and it's almost you know there's 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 so much that you can read uh in the script initially the ideas that you have but then immediately you kind of walk onto set and something which might read as like a, oh okay you know there's a field of zombies nice suddenly when you see it in its vast you know, in its the size, the sheer size and scale of, you know, the way we did this production, you can understand um, sort of why these moments are like particularly traumatic and triggering. And then you kind of feedback, I'd feedback to Tamara, be like, yo, this was insane. This, the set was crazy. So like when you, this moment that you have, when you see your first one, you know, this is kind of maybe the level that we might want to start with so that we can build up to this point. And it just like, it was like an ongoing discussion, but we were really lucky to have like a script that was so filled with stuff that we could play with. And also in terms of the scripts there, you know, it, it feels like there probably was quite a lot of exposition in terms of the different spaces, the areas, the zombies, you know, what it is that your character is facing in all these moments. Cause like you said, until you show up on set, sometimes it's kind of hard to tell what, what that's going to look like. Did you, you know, did you have enough of the scripts early on and enough of the detail in there that that really gave you that opportunity to not just character build, but to world build? Because like you said, you're playing a character a few years into the future in a very different setting. And there's obviously certain things that then inform and, and really shape your character in a very specific way with that as well. Um, so the scripts, I, when I first, the, when the project first sort of like landed um, in my inbox, as it were, I had the first two episodes and then um, I got to read the rest of the season and it was great to sort of see the trajectory that we were going on um the production itself actually was slated to start way before so like with this is one of those ones that got held up due to the panda <laughs> um and uh they so that means that the director of the first block especially and the producers had a lot of time to marinate with the script and world build so when we kind of came to this, there wasn't a lot of, you know, second guessing. There wasn't a lot of, oh, do we want it to look like this? Do we want it to look like this? They had the time to decide what they wanted. <laughs> so um, it was also nice being able to like sort of come, in, come into this um, with the ideas that, you know, we, we as performers, as actors have for these characters and for these like huge set pieces. And it was a, such a big collaborative effort. And then on top of that, we have the entire law of, the Resident Evil franchise. So there was just so much to work with. <laughs> And obviously one of the things that you're, you're tasked for with this character and with your performance as well is, you know, there's there's this huge world of what, what Resident Evil is within the series, but at the same time, it always needs to come back to that, that connectivity to the audience and in particular to Jade, you know, mm -hmm. she's our window into the story and the way that we're emotionally connecting to what's happening and everything that she's facing. Um, was, it, was it fairly easy to kind of like find the intimacy of character and the intimacy of moments and scenes within a lot of those larger moments or were there challenges that came with making sure that you were always finding that and creating that connectivity for us in the way that you have yeah this is a great question because um it was a very immersive experience for me in particular um you know I 
as Ella Balinska was away from my family, sort of in a different, on a different continent in the middle of this crazy situation that was going on in the world. But there were so many parallels with the character. And I really lent into that, um, which is something like new that I definitely tr- sort of, there are always parallels a little bit that you find, but really like channeling those emotions into that area. And, you know, Jade herself, she is away from her family. She's trying to get home to her husband and her child. She's, you know, she's not, she doesn't want to be away for as long that she is, but she has to be because of her work. And those moments where, I mean, it's sort of like spoiler, but not spoiler. It's, you know, it's this, it's a zombie apocalypse. <laughs> the likelihood of someone that she meets surviving is very slim. <laughs> so the second she does have those moments, you know, where she does meet new people, she doesn't initially trust them, but it's still that sort of very, very, very brief moments of human interaction that sort of keeps her sane and gives her, reminds, reminds her of her raison d'etre. Um, and sort of that, that parallel for both me as an actor and also the character I felt was just such, it was just such a strong connection that, you know, it made those moments really meaningful to play out and really emotional. And then it's sort of, that's when you get the nice juxtaposition of these crazy action beats versus um, these really quiet, intimate moments where you start really learning who Jade is, especially when you, cut to the 2022 period and you see like why she is the person that she is today. I like what you're bringing up there as well in terms of when she meets new people in this world that she she doesn't trust anybody immediately. Um, and one of the things that I think you've done really interestingly in your performance is that there's there's kind of different aspects that people get to see of her. You know, no one gets to see her full self, but depending on the person and and what that connection in that moment in time within this apocalypse is, depends on kind of like what she reveals of herself to them in terms of her personality, in terms of details about herself. Um, and so as you would go through the scripts and go through scene by scene when she has these moments where she's encountering different people in different spaces, how did you determine that the, the minutiae of those sorts of details of what is she going to allow this person to see what's maybe going to accidentally come to the surface and all of that. I think she's as a, as a character immediately, she's, she's very, she makes her mind up. She knows what she thinks about things. She has immediately has an opinion and she knows what, how she wants to act on them. Um, and I think because of that authenticity, she really is a face value person. So whenever she meets someone, it's never, you know, oh, I'm going to try and be like this. It's more, here's what I am. I will let you respond and see how you react to me doing me. <laughs> and then we shall negotiate from this point, um, which made a lot of these sort of interactions very fun and exciting. You know, working with Turlo, who plays um, Baxter, you know, that's a really great example of, she has her opinion and she stands by it. <laughs> She's not a people pleaser. Um, but that being said, it does have its tendencies to bite her in the ass and she has to get out of those situations. Um, so it was kind of, it was very fun, almost throwing out this unapologetic version of this character and seeing what, you know, the actor I was working with, what the character that I was in the scene with would give back because then we'd write okay it's like a whole negotiation figure this out it was it that part was really fun yeah because was was it quite an interesting exercise going through the series and like you said you know it's a zombie apocalypse so there's going to be a lot of people that don't survive and, <laughs> and having all, but having so many opportunities to play scenes with different actors and to really figure out that dance and that rhythm with so many different yeah. partners yeah and also those moments where you don't want the dance and the rhythm you know where sh- there really is this you know, polarizing like two two forces that don't align, which creates like a really exciting level of conflict amongst the conflict. And a great example of that actually was for, um, funnily enough, actually with the, the zeros, which which are what we're calling the, the 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 zombies who aren't undead; they're just simply infected humans. Um, when we and the fight scenes. So the the key thing about Jade is that she's not a superhero. 
She's not meant to be an action hero. She's simply a survivalist, a scientist try out in the field, trying to do research and get back home. So when we kind of, I went into the stunt room to, you know, work on how we're going to do these fight sequences. I was very, you know, I was like, this isn't my first rodeo. Here we go. We're going to do like a, we're going to do like a bunch of these huge set pieces. And funnily enough, um, Grant Powell and Mo Murray, who are the stunt coordinator and, and fight choreographer, they, they were like, we want you to be as messy and we want it to feel as dangerous as possible. So I actually learned um, a lot of jujitsu for the role simply because there's so much grappling and there's so much unexpected. You don't really know what comes next because cut two, when we were filming these massive, you know, Jade trying to fight her way through a sea of zeros. I mean, even the logistics of it, I'm like, you've got a hundred zeros running at you full speed covered in blood and gore and prosthetics with eye contact in like they can't even see themselves <laughs> so it's never going to be perfect but because we'd had those you know the, the the training behind it those moments those encounters with every single zero was like okay how do we negotiate this we have a general idea of what we want to do we know that this lovely supporting artist slash some person needs to end up on the ground over here <laughs> But how we do it is a case by case. Um, it's, it's honest, honestly, but on a case by case basis. So the whole filming experience was genuinely very much just one person with the world happening at her. It was is pretty much the summary of all of that. <laughs> <laughs> but what I love about that that detailing as well is that that speaks to her knowledge and, and her worldview and her experience as a character. You know, she hasn't gone through formal training, but she's been fighting these zombies for years. And so she kind of like has a real intuitive way in which she mm. she grapples against them. What were what were some of the other ways in which you would look at the scripts and look at episodes in certain moments and think, well, what does she know? Because she's also someone who's been studying the zeros quite a lot and understands, you know, what their sense of smell does, you know, what their vision is like, how to kind of like distract and maneuver a little bit. And she's still always observing them keenly in every single scene. So the writers did an incredible job of when you watch this series, it's so satisfying seeing both timelines linking up together. Um, so you can really lean into some of those moments, um, you know, whether it's like emotion, a, particularly emotional beats towards the end of the first season which you know otherwise you might be like mm, have you really earned this moment of emotion the answer is yes because you've got two timelines <laughs> leading up to sort of give you that release that not only you know the audience are wanting to have but also the character really needs um so that I, I think just generally leaning into the authenticity of moment to moment because honestly it, this is an example of thankfully we haven't been in a zombie apocalypse <laughs> you know what I'm saying and like thankfully even though we did go through a worldwide crisis um we didn't leave our house with zombies walking the streets <laughs> so there's the things that you can really play into and really trust is the emotion of each moment and with the emotion as well, you know, going back to what you were talking about earlier in terms of that connectivity to her husband and her daughter and everything is about, you know, trying to survive, trying to understand a way that we can control this apocalypse so that she can get back to her family and that be really being the core of everything mm -hmm. for her as a character. Um, you know, you're also challenged with the fact that you're playing that without being able to be there physically in scenes together but you really have to carry that connectivity not just in the moments where she's on the phone or video chatting with them mm. but in those moments in between as well where we're understanding her motivations for certain other choices and so how did you make sure that 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 intimacy and that connectivity was always there even when the other characters weren't in a scene along with that added challenge of not being able to be there to kind of spar off of each other in person so this is when we kind of go, oh, the magic of Q-Take. <laughs> so Q-Take is like, um, when, whenever they're filmed, whenever we're filming, we have like a, uh, an online, I suppose like where all the monitors, whatever the camera's seeing, you can log in and see what is happening. So on my off days that I, that were very few, <laughs> I would be, whatever I was doing during the day, I'd always have 
cue take on so I could see the rushes, I could see the, the scenes happening in the other timeline, um, which was very generous of the producers to do for me, simply because it's such a such a bizarre situation where normally if you do have two separate things going on, think of I'm not stranger things, for example, that that what's going on is isolated and they all come together and learn what's happened when they come back together. This I have it like my character has to have the knowledge of what happened in the past, <laughs> how it happened, what it felt like, certain things in the scene. And that was when I sort of connect with Tamara and we sort of knock heads and go, right, here are the here are the key beats, here are the key things that you need to know moving on through to even something as simple as um, I think was it is it episode two with the cats. I, I'm like Jay doesn't like cats. There we go. Do with that information what you will, Tam. <laughs> Did the two of you have much of an opportunity before filming as well to to just connect on elements of the character and and to find those those beats and those aspects that you both wanted to bring to your performances because there is such a linearity between the way that the two of you have found this character together on screen. Yes, yes, definitely. I think you know she's an amazing performer um, and. You know, there were just things that intuitively we, when we first sort of came into contact with the, the character, we were like, oh, these are instinctually habits and little things that this character possesses. And we aligned on those things. Um, and that was sort of the magic of the magic of it, to be honest. This is like one of those crazy things that happens in, in film and TV when you know, you have two artists who just synchronize their thoughts on what a character is like. And it's almost like it ha it's like happy accident. <laughs> it just it, all these little things just tie in together and it worked out really well, in my opinion, anyway. <laughs> And, and, you know, with some of the physical elements of, of your character as well, it's not just about creating that initial physicality and who she is in response to the, the world and, and all of the circumstances around her, but it's also such a continuation. It's, okay, well, if she's just battled a large group of zombies, then she's going to be covered in blood and, and kind of just like physically a bit more depleted. Ooh. So <laughs> the next thing that she's encountering is going to look a little bit different. And so how did you how did you make sure that you were always calibrating the physical elements of, of what that looked like alongside? you know what's just happened to her before what happened the day before what happened the week before as to where she is in that timeline so this is where I share this amazing anecdote of <laughs> we had <laughs> the costume trailer um I mean have you seen have you seen the the full have you seen the full shebang have you seen the full um I was given the first four given the first four okay yeah. so I mean this applies yeah so put it this way Jade doesn't wear she doesn't change costume that much throughout this first season you'd walk into the costume trailer and it was like from stage zero to full send of like this red jumpsuit this iconic red jumpsuit of just completely clean <laughs> and excuse my language effed up beyond belief <laughs> <laughs> where we go hmm which one are we choosing today <laughs> and so the continuity um the continuity aspect was something that was really both fun and just you know going to bed at the end of the day where I'd, I'd, I'd come back to my room and I'd have you know pro bits of prosthetics and dirt and gore and blood in my hair but I didn't wash it out because I knew the next day we were going to have to go straight back to that blood and go. <laughs> so I'm like, you just, it was sort of like a, you do it, do it for the art. But um, that was uh, an amazing, amazing job of continuity done by the makeup department, hair department, the costume, um, even the, con the script supervisor. Um, and we block by block, we generally did it generally did it in um chronological order generally so we we didn't have to ever go full send to absolute zero so that kind of helped us keep track of things <laughs> i'm pretty impressed because four episodes in their hair makeup and costumes pretty muddied up already <laughs> i have i'm waiting for the day that netflix gives me the green light i have some crazy bts of these time lapses of crazy sequences which, I mean, it, 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 that's a production in itself. My Lord, some of those cool times. <laughs> <laughs> 
Yeah, one of one of the other aspects in terms of, of physical elements of a character is, you know, you you've played quite a few roles, and and it sounds like you're always very often drawn to characters that are going to be really physically challenging in different ways, or very expressive in a physical way as well. You know, so when you're playing a character like Jade in a series like this, what's what's that kind of connectivity or that difference in the relationship that you find when you're able to channel so much physically into a character? Um, I think there's there's sort of like a an artist version of this and sort of like the little inner eight-year-old version of this um, to answer. Um, the eight-year-old, I loved Resident Evil as a kid. I used to play the games. I watched the movies. I, I loved it. So, you know, I, this sort of script lands in my inbox and I'm like, absolutely. hundred <laughs> percent. I want to do this. Um, so that's one reason where, you know, like physically I'd be drawn to it because you know, you play these games and you'd, you'd want to, you'd want to, you feel like you're in the action. You know, I just restarted Resident Evil 2, the video game, and you're just, you're in it. You're, you're part of the, you're part of the world. So to be able to actually do that is a huge bucket list moment. But as a, as an artist now, um, it's one of those things where it's like, I've had the training beforehand. You know, I trained in, in martial arts. I've trained in weapons combat. I was an athlete before I was an actor. And when you start refining, it's almost like a you start refining your this skill. Um, you know, it's all well and good to have a you know an amazing sword, but as you start sharpening it, that's when you start getting really really great with with what you're doing. And I'm sort of, I guess, in this interesting little. Um, interesting little beat in my career where I'm really enjoying refining that sort of skill set and pushing the limits and seeing where I can go and learning things because you know it's only stuff that I can just take on to if I ever move well I am into the producing space as well to make just to for the just to just to sort of get a hard 360 degree you know perspective on what it means to make something of this genre so it's interesting. <laughs> no, I, I really love that, you know, and also one, one of the other things with this genre as well, was it was it quite interesting to look at the, the moral complexities that your character's faced with? Because, you know, again, a lot of the people that she's meeting and she's kind of indirect perimeter with are people that she's just met for the first time. So there's not this longstanding history you know, but we do see a lot of the backstory with her sister and, and how that led to a lot of her relationships or the way that she responds to people. And there's moments where she, you know, she does want to try and help other people survive, mm. but also there's moments where it has to be about that self-survival. And if I try and do the same for this person, then I might not even make it. Whereas, you know, if I step away a little bit, then at least one of us gets through. And so was that quite an interesting moral complexity to, to explore and discover and play with within the character? Yes. Um, it's that ama it's that amazing thing of you know she has a responsibility. A lot of these characters have nothing to lose, you know, and that's really fun to play. Been there, but <laughs> but she has got something to lose. She's not a martyr in this situation. She's simply being confronted with the echoes of the past. She's doing her absolute best to deal with them. And the best thing, the best way, I can summarize that is when they say you know on the airplane put your face mask on before putting on someone else's because if you it, 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 it that in itself just says so much it's not selfish at the same time it is selfish because you're helping yourself but you can't help other people without you being in a, a position of being able to help people in the first place so and how she, how she feels about that sometimes is tricky. And it, a lot of the time we were working with the director and, you know, we'd be like, how much is she, how much is she allowed to care in this moment? <laughs> we'd be like, Cause, but that's the thing. That's the thing that's so exciting is that like, there are moments that she doesn't make the right decision. She does the best thing that she can in a split moment, in a split moment second. This bit second moment. There we go. Um, and sometimes she makes the wrong decision and that's so human. And, you know, there are moments where you love this character and there are moments where you hate this character. And I think that complexity is in itself um, 
especially when playing a protagonist for a lack of in inverted com in inverted commas of protagonist um it's a hard thing to combat because you always want to try and be the person that you know that everyone likes the audience wants to relate to but it's often um as an artist it's a big step back from you know i suppose the performer's ego of wanting to be the most like character on, on you know in the story to actually live by the truth and also authenticity of what this character is going through and there's there's that added layer as well with her that it's not just about trying to survive but you know going back to what we were talking about before the fact that she's really studying the behavior she understands the realism of we can't fully eradicate this but if we can understand it, if we can learn it maybe there's a way to figure out how to contain it um, you know, and that also gives an interesting layer as to how she's approaching a lot of these situations, both in terms of just trying to survive and both in the, the, the way that she's watching everything going around her and how that contextualizes your character in a lot of yes. scenes. And so how did that shape a lot of aspects and elements for you as well? It's that is one of the ways she's dealing with her trauma of what happened in the past. I don't want to give any spoilers away, but, you know, her almost hyper fixating on trying to, you know, she's not, she wouldn't be saving the world, but it's a start. Her hyperfix, her hyperfixating on, on that thought alone is the way that she is able to deal with her trauma and everything that's happened. Um, I'm like, this is the best way I can explain it without giving the plot away. <laughs> Well, I so appreciate you sharing all of these details. And I, I know it's especially tricky when you're trying not to give the whole thing away. You know what I mean? Yeah. I'm like, girl, if I, if I could say the whole thing, I'd be like. You're like, in the last episode, in the last five minutes. Girl needs a therapist. <laughs> 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 well, it's a really wonderful character and I'm so glad that you've you've gotten the chance to bring a performance like this into the franchise. So thank you so much for talking about it. I really appreciate it. No, thank you. Honestly, they're really some really awesome um insightful questions which hopefully, you know, when people are watching the show they can go, "Oh, actually, you know what? There's there's uh there's that there's that moment that she was talking about." Um but I'm honestly so excited for people to watch this because again, like you say, it's um it's it's a fun show. It's like filled with action and emotion and family and things that you know we need to we need to see today. We were, we need we, we need it. And there's nothing. It's it's a it breathes a new life into the history of Resident Evil. Um, and all the the ensemble does such a good job. I'm honestly just so excited for fans to have it. Absolutely, I'm so excited for everyone to get to see it. Thank you so much. Thank you.